This is Twit. The new Apple Pencil is here. The new Apple Pencil yeah. is here. Yeah. What, did you have this on your bingo card with, you know, like, let's see, maybe new Macs, maybe new iPads? Pencil. And, and everybody was so excited about, oh, we've, we've got inside information about a big, big release this week. We've, we're pretty sure it's going to be new iPads. Let us let me give you a speculation about the new some of the new changes in the 7-inch oh, yeah. iPad mini. Like, oh, you know, it's a pencil the, and not one, even a good pencil. One, okay. news, one news source <laughs> did have that it was going to be just an Apple Pencil. But even then, they were like, yeah, it's going to be a third generation Apple Pencil with a magnetically changed <laughs> tip and all that. And it's like, folks, this is Apple Pencil 2 minus 0.5. Oh, no. Basically. <laughs> um, is it from Crayola? What's the deal? So it, it you, it's funny you mentioned that because the Logitech makes a product called the Crayon and, and that sold to education. And it feels yeah. like Apple got the feedback that maybe that was a good product and they should make, make it themselves. So they did. They made this thing that is a USB-C. Well, yeah. that's an improvement. That's good. Sure. We should make USB-C all the things. Um, is It's not a magnetic tip? Uh, no, it's 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 basically a decontented Apple Pencil, too. So they they um, it doesn't charge wirelessly. You have to plug in a USB-C oh. cable to it. So but that's that does mean nice that features. it will work with every USB. Uh, I think basically every shipping iPad will work with it. Uh, uh -huh. including that 10th generation they announced with that weird dongle, the lightning to USB-C dongle thing that they had to make in order to work with the 10th right. generation base model iPad. This so this is that. deceptive because they are showing it. This is a picture of this press release so uh, docked to a screen, it but it's not charging. It attaches magnetically. Yeah. And in fact, there are magnets in that 10th generation iPad, but what they don't do is charge it. Uh, you charge it by plugging it in via the USB-C cable. But So on, on one level, it, it's better uh, than what was there before. On another level i mean i got a, a bunch of questions one is why now uh this is the product <laughs> that should have shipped with that 10th generation ipad a year ago so why now that's sort of strange and then you know th another question to have is um you know why a decontented pencil because it's actually less functional than the first generation pencil in the yeah. sense that it doesn't do any pressure sensitivity. It is That's why I mentioned the Logitech Crayon. Logitech made this product called the Crayon. You had to plug it in separately to charge it, but and it didn't have pressure sensitivity, but it, did, it was cheap. And I think it was targeted at education. And it sounds like Apple got a lot of feedback. Uh, look, the low end of the iPad market is so much driven by what, it, what Apple's education partners want. That's why the ninth generation iPad still exists because the 10th generation one is too expensive for them. And this sounds, this feels very much like the same kind of thing where they were saying we we need a cheaper pencil, and rather than having Logitech uh, continue to sell that <laughs> that crayon, they're like, no, no, we can make you a cheaper pencil, and it solves the problem of Lightning versus USB C. But, but make no mistake, this is not like next gen pencil. It's less functional than yeah. not just the second gen, but even the first gen. Yeah, it's it's also missing the the side tab for extra functionality. You, like, as Jason said, uh, one of the neat if. if wireless charging was was one of the handiest parts about the real pencil that the the one that didn't do wireless charging at least as much as people made fun of it you you undo the cap and hey look it's actually got a, a male connector so it can actually plug directly into the charge port this has a female USB C, so you're going to have to have a cable in order to charge it uh yeah and, and it's not even that much less expensive i think the the logitech crayon was 49 or a little bit less than that this is 79 bucks and so that's it's it's that's uh, it's 50 bucks less than I th what, what I think we can legitimately call the real pencil, but it's not so much less that it's like, oh, thank God, the Apple Pencil is now reachable to a whole class of people who couldn't afford it before. It's more like, and, and given that it's not that much better than a stylus, I mean, you do, like a, a, a dumb stylus, I mean, you do have tilt s sensitivity, so, and there are a lot of apps that will kind of leverage that to try to give you, with acceleration, the uh, not pressure sensitivity, but at least variations in thickness, more a lively line. But real, all the, really, all the fun things that make you want to have a pencil with a, with an Apple logo on it are, are, are missing from this. So that's oh. it's odd. And I think that, it, but, but proportionality, um, I think, matters to some degree. Which is that if you're aiming at the ninth generation iPad, having something 129 dollars is a third of the cost of the, of the iPad. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there's a proportionality of lowering that. And I, I think the problem with the Logitech is. 
for students, it looks a little goofy. You know, like it's just it's just a goofy looking. It um, looks like stylus. a kid's pencil. It's yeah. Yeah. So I think it looks like a carpenter's pencil or something. Yeah. Right? Well, it's it does. It's flat. It, right? And it, it has some issues. Away, yeah. It's got a power on off feature that you have to do, which I think that this one, if you magnetically draw, it's got some smart. Uh, power consumption things, so it turns itself off basically, and that's not what happens with the uh, the Logitech one. I think you have to turn it off, so you can. It's really easy to drain the battery. But yeah, this is. I think the only way to view this. This is one of those weird things where you kind of have to view it in the market in which it's intended. Although I would say it almost feels like we're we're headed into Apple Pencil and Apple Pencil Pro territory here. Yeah. A little bit where like the next pencil will be super cutting edge. And then they'll also have this one that's like the cheap one if you don't care. Because a lot of people don't care about pressure sensitivity. Honestly, I use the Apple Pencil to edit podcasts. I don't need pressure that's sensitivity true. at all. Yeah. I, I could I could probably yeah. use this. But you do forego, I have an iPad Pro, you forego that really easy uh, pairing and charging stuff if you go this route, but yeah, that seems they to do. I mean, in, in the in the in the features list, they do put uh, in, in terms of functional functions. The number one is pixel perfect precision, which is not just alliterative, but that's probably the one thing that is a that is a deal breaker for pretty much everybody who wants a device like this. The ability to uh, that the dots and the lines go exactly where I expect them to be, and yeah. that it keeps up with my writing. That's probably the table stakes that this is designed to serve, and then anything beyond that is just gravy yeah because you know a lot of the people who you know one of the use cases is note taking and things like that or even right. my podcast editing or whatever and packing a bunch of really detailed features for artists in a product that also has this other use case i can see the argument that uh, maybe in the long run this ends up being updated at some point with that magnetic charging but basically what they're saying is look we know a lot of you don't need this so we're going to make a cheaper version of it yeah. too yeah. it's just weird because now we've got a first gen and a second gen and now here's a new pencil but it's really not even it's kind of a step behind the second if not a step behind the first so it's just uh, they're broadening their product the ipad line is so confusing right now they haven't keep in mind they haven't announced any ipads this year at all and I, the optimist in me wants to say maybe they're like getting it together for next year where <laughs> where it'll actually make a little more sense but um some of the things i wrote a piece about this uh, this morning at six colors some things aren't going to change because like tim cook's apple is a company that will keep old products around to hit price points and it's clear that that ninth generation ipad which was supplanted by the 10th generation ipad a year ago is still around because the school buyers said we're not paying an extra hundred dollars for that other ipad we want this one that's cheaper yeah. and so here we are where you end up with some weird products in the product lineup because that's Apple sometimes is just trying to meet some markets. And if you're not in that market, you might say this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's also kind of weird to me that they, it, if you put these two side by side, I'm, granted, I'm only going from the product page, but they seem to be, they, they, they look identical. They seem to be the exact same size, or at least on the, on the screen, if they're at this, if they're depicted at the same angle, they are the same pixel height on the web page yeah. side by side. The Apple Pencil so 2 and this one, yeah. Yeah, I, I would have I would have been surprised if they that they didn't decide to make this a little bit shorter, a just to make it really distinctive that hey I'm picking up something that is the hundred twenty nine dollar one, not the lesser eighty dollar one, but also to make it maybe a little bit more totable. It's not that the the original Apple Pencil is hard to carry around, but it's just long enough to sort of foil your attempt to just throw it into a bag or throw it into like a, a pencil pouch uh, that's attached to whatever it is that you got. Particularly if you're thinking about this as an accessory for the, for the iPad mini, you would think that a smaller version of this would also appeal for that kind of thing. But just again, just to make sure that make these things as distinctive as possible, that's that's an an interesting move as far as I'm concerned. I, you know, it's funny that the name is the USB-C pencil, as yeah. if that's the feature. <laughs> I mean, to the I common, was, to the casual consumer, when you look at that product chart, it just, I mean, yeah, it, ha it has hover, but it doesn't have pressure. It's kind of a weird uh, mix of features and non-features. But when you look at that chart, look at the title, it's the USB-C pencil. Yeah. And I, I feel like it, consumers are going to go in and that's the distinction well, I wonder if it, is, if, yeah. it, if it had anything to do with the EU or anything else. I'm just saying, here's a, you know, it's an electronic device that has USB-C, like it, where there was something there. They, Maybe they it's the it. EU. Maybe it's no, schools that I, said, look, we, no, it if you're going to sell us stuff, it's all got to charge with the same no, the connector because we got a cart. 
The reason yep. this is happening is because the they are moving all their products to USB C, and that iPad 10th Gen moved to USB C, right? And they didn't have a pencil that worked with it, right? right. Because they didn't have it doesn't have oh, no, magnetic. Right. Uh, or right. attachment with charging, right? So it's really and for so, that iPad 10, the, and which the, is a yeah, school, so the iPad 10, they, sold iPad. The, they said you had to use the first Apple Pencil, which was like, wait a second, that's still around? With yeah. a weird dongle that was a lightning to USB-C. Oh, dongle. dongle. Yeah. So you oh, plug it into lightning and then plug it in, and it was all janky <laughs> and, and wiggly and stuff. And like, this product is made for that, but it also does serve the market of sort of like, it works with all these other iPads. So it's like, if you want a cheaper one, you can you can do it. But like, what are the, I think what are the three must have been the driving force because the first generation pencil couldn't can't stick around it's just got a lightning nub on the back and right and i feel like they're phasing that one out but yeah, what are the three price go. points are it's this is the new one's 129 that's because excuse me the the apple pencil pro for want to call it that is 129 the new apple pencil USB C is 79 the apple pencil first generation is 99 bucks okay so it yeah, sounds so it's to cheaper hmm, that's interesting so it's the cheapest of the three mm-hmm Hmm. I wonder, I mean, honestly, they've got to be phasing out the original Apple Pencil, right? Yeah, the problem is, is, is the reason it's not gone yet is because they still sell the ninth generation iPad, uh, which has lightning, which means it only works with the first generation. This is, this is what I was writing about this morning specifically is like, this is the price you pay for having yeah. the strategy where you hold, you, you make some cheaper products by holding old products around right. a little too long is you end up when you're in a technology transition, like we are with lightning and USB see you end up with this lightning ipad that the schools still want and you're like oh and then they want pencils for it and, you, and if you're apple you're like oh god uh, i don't want to make a pencil for it right. um <laughs> although that said i think this pencil works with it but you have to charge it via USB-C. but i think they work um you can correct yeah, me if i do I'm think wrong. they work it's, on i think they work on all of them i think it's just on all of them so this does get it. you out of the original pencil eventually which is good because that product is what 10 years old now <laughs> it's yeah. like it's been around it's time to go it, it must be driving the engineers at apple crazy because it's just yeah. aesthetically it must be making them you know you know nuts. this thing took a year to make i'm sure i'm sure there was like a team that worked on this for a year and yeah. and it's just got you, you got to feel like you're kind of on a like oh, okay well well right. no because i think what happened is you know uh whoever the engine i didn't, can't take track of apple vps anymore but <laughs> whoever is responsible for this came to them and say look guys you're going to be making the new Apple Pencil. It's the, going to be the base model. Don't tell anybody that. But we can't get rid of that other one. You but know. this is the new base model Apple Pencil, and that's what you're going to be making. And I, and and we got in the price. You got to hit a low price point. And, and, I still. And, 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 yeah. don't know why this didn't happen last year like what may because last year they could have come yeah. out and said okay old pencil's gone new pencils here yeah. works with USB C. still works with the old uh ninth gen if you want to you just have to you know get a cable or whatever like they could they, they, it would have been so much cleaner and instead it it's like a whole year later so something happened well, i it could have been feedback at that point when they it come out be, with it right? and people go hey what the what the what you know like, want I, I want you know we're, we're missing this thing and they're like okay and then it takes a year like it's it, it take like if they it's not like when you talk about mass production of, of, of products with electronics anything new from them getting feedback to them releasing a product is a year i I, it could be the case. However, I'm going to, this is, this is going to sound weird, but like I give Apple enough credit and the people there to be smart enough that I don't right. think that's what happened because I think it was apparently clear the moment that product came out last year, we were all like, what? You've got a weird <laughs> adapter for the original pencil for a brand new iPad. Why are you doing this? And there, there would have, this product is the answer to like, oh, well, no, we're doing this other thing. And yet it didn't exist. I'm now maybe there was a fight and it got deprioritized and then they heard the feedback from customers and they're like, all right, we do have to do it. But I am positive that the people involved in the iPad going into that product announcement last year knew that this was a bad idea and that they <laughs> needed to do something else. But for whatever reason, my guess is they just couldn't, you know, it was deprioritized and there was other stuff yeah, that was more important. So it just got left behind. I'm clear that they saw that it was a problem. I just think that they didn't know how deep the water was right. until they got feedback. Just and wait and see. Like, well, right. Okay. Yep. Now we're going to have to do something about Could that. Be. And that, but from the time they make that decision to the time it comes out is a year, like, you know, for a piece sure. of hardware.
Tech Break is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV, now called ACI Learning. ACI's newest product, Insights, assists in closing lucrative skill gaps so your team won't fall behind. Empower your team, outmaneuver threats, and gain essential insight into your business. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit today. Twit listeners can receive up to 65% off an IT Pro enterprise solution plan. The discount is based on the size of your team when you fill out their form. 